This car garners attention from everybody, whether it's you know a housewife jogging down the street who turns her head to hear what the sound is and then delivery strikes her and she says, wow. Or whether it's the nine-year-old kids playing football in the media and then when I come home from work, they all stop their football game and cheer and clap and go, yeah, cool car, man. And I think that's where it kind of transcends everyone and kind of draws everybody into you know, what Porsche is. I'm Grant Carnes and I drive a 1979 930 Turbo. The car was originally owned by a very good friend of our family, and in particular a very good friend of my father, and in his will he gave my dad the opportunity to buy the car from his estate. Every time I walked into his garage I looked at this car and I thought to myself, wow, it's just so beautiful, it's a 930, it's iconic. Finally one day in 2007 he called me after he had retired and he said, I'm going to sell the 930, are you interested? He goes, I'm pretty sure you are, and I said, I absolutely am interested in buying that car. So we struck a deal, I'd like to say that I paid full price, but it was a little bit of a father-son deal, which I think I'd do for my son or daughter also. It only had 16 or 17,000 original miles. It was imported, I think, in New York, sold to somebody in Missouri. I was a single owner when his friend acquired it, and so I believe my dad was the third owner, so I'm the fourth. So it was in great shape. The only thing that I would say is that it probably hadn't been driven enough. You know, 930s begged to be driven. So I got the car, and I drove it for about a year and a half until about 2009, at which point I'd done a fair amount of research and decided to look into making some improvements to the car to make it a little bit more drivable and unleash some of that potential that the 930 is known to have. I really had two objectives in the, in the project. One was to be able to really preserve kind of the originality of the car and its ability to be returned to stock. And the second was I really wanted to unleash the potential and really see what the 930 was. stuff, you know, new headers, new exhaust, upgraded the wastegate, put a new K27 turbocharger in it. We left all the stock intercooler and, in, you know, I didn't really want to go overboard with the project. Did a top end rebuild and a few other minor things and today it's pretty well the car that I want it to be. A very good friend of mine by the name of Dan Porter of Magna Graphics recently started a company and started designing race car liveries, but some of his early prototypes were magnetic graphics, which he still sells today. So my car became a bit of a prototyping vehicle for him. At some point we sat down and he put this martini livery on my car and I said, oh my gosh, it's just gorgeous. And so I knew I had to have it. And the great thing about it is you don't have to repaint the car, don't have to put vinyl on the car. Now you've got just a great livery that pays homage to the racing history of Porsche and it's completely removable. just iconic from a number of perspectives. It's not only the most beautiful design that Porsche ever produced with the big wide fenders and the great tail and everything, but it also represents kind of a symbol of the racing history. It embodies great engineering of the day back in the early 70s. I wrote an article not too long ago about how I enjoy all things that blend art and science. And as an engineer, I find myself drawn to things that bring those two elements together. So science and engineering and art. And you look at the 930 as just a classic example of that. Beautiful in its form, able to paint an incredible line around a racetrack, yet its engineering was just top-notch back in the day, and to some degree, arguably, maybe still today. So those types of things that allow you the creative expression, but still require you to achieve some technical proficiency, are exactly the things that really draw me in, and I think that's what Porsche represents. My family understands my involvement in Porsche from this perspective. They understand my need to strike that balance between art and science in my life and the ability to be involved in things that produce a little more adrenaline than the things that they're used to being involved in.
at the end of the day, the most redeeming part of owning a car like this is really just the self-satisfaction you get from experiencing it in so many ways. So you climb behind the wheel of the 930 and it engages everything. It's a very visceral experience. You can't pay attention to other things. You don't want to listen to the radio. You don't want to text. You don't want to take calls. You just want to listen to the engine, listen to that beautiful flat six sound, listen to the exhaust, feel the road, get all the feedback that you can get from that car, get the smells. I mean, it's just one giant sensation of driving. What I find is every day you drive it, it becomes more and more familiar, but it's always exciting. It always has been, it always will be, and no matter how many miles I put in that car behind the wheel, every day I will learn something and it'll just continue to build. My work is only five to 10 minutes from my house, but if I can have that experience for a mere five or 10 minutes in a day, how could I not choose that?